So I would like to just start this morning off out of Nehemiah 8 verse 10, where Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when we think about that, we ask ourselves, what was God's joy? Jesus is God's joy. And we know Paul says to us that through Christ, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus is our great joy. Jesus is the one that brings us into where we are today, brings us back home. He, he, he just he, he positions us in such a way through his kindness and his grace and the sacrifice of who he is that that is what we look forward to. That is the great joy. This is the reason for the season. Jesus is our season. And it's not just December. It's 24-7 of every day, of every month, of every year that we're able to press into Him and be found in Him and draw on His strength and walk with Him. So we are in our Christmas series called Great Joy. We are in part two. We are going to look at Zechariah, his praise to God in Luke verse 1. So I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to dive straight into it this morning. Um, as I was just unpacking and reading this, I was very excited to share this message. There's just so much about Zechariah and what he went through and what he had to experience and carry in his life that we'll be able to relate, relate to this morning. So who was Zechariah? In Luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 8, we get a bit of insight into who Zechariah was. So Zechariah was a priest in the city of Judah. He belonged to the priestly division of, um, I hope I'm going to get this right, Abijah. So that's a priestly division that he belonged to. He was married to Elizabeth who was a descendant of Aaron. The Gospel of Luke tells us that both of Elizabeth and Zechariah were righteous in the sight of God. And it's very interesting why I'm sharing this because you, you will see as it goes on. They were observing all the Lord's commands and, decree, and decrees blamelessly. And I found it very interesting that verse 6 ends with that word blamelessly. But when you look what verse 7 starts with, it says, but... So there was something about them that was still very evident to the Jewish people about Zechariah and Elizabeth. It says they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both old. In those days, Dawn mentioned this last week, in those days it was a real big deal to be childless. It would have been considered that they lacked the favor and grace and blessing of God on their lives, they actually, it actually would have been a position of a heavy weight on their shoulders in the community and in the culture of the Jewish people where they would almost carry a, a, a disgrace upon them because they could not conceive. Zechariah was, the ma uh, Zach Zachariah was made mute by the angel Gabriel for his unbelief. So let's read a, a bit of this conversation that he had with the angel Gabriel, uh, Gabriel that brought on this, of him being made mute and being silent. So it's Luke chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. It says, when Zechariah, saw, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. So Zechariah knew who was standing in front of him. And we need to understand that. So being in the priestlyhood and understanding how God operates in those times, he knew that there was an angel standing in front of him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Isn't that amazing? Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will call him John. So now you think that Zechariah would have fallen to his knees, praising God, thanking God for hearing his prayers. Not only that, you would think that Zechariah would have stood up, left his duties at the temple, run home, run through the streets to Elizabeth, calling out to her, saying to her, celebrating that God had heard their prayers and that they were going to have a son. But Zechariah doesn't do that. 
Zechariah asked the angel. He says, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. And you know, Zechariah is full of wisdom in this moment when he's speaking to the angel. And for the husbands out there, he doesn't say, and my wife is very old. His wording has got so much wisdom in it. It is wisdom for us here today and how we maybe bring across our wives' ages. So he says, my wife is well along in her years. But friends, doubt, unbelief, maybe even hopelessness had crept into the heart of Zechariah. Think about the years that would have elapsed. Him praying and asking. Think about the weight of what he was carrying his wife. Think about it. They were in the priesthood and they were descendants of Aaron. So they would have fully understand how the people looked upon them. They're not favored. They carry disgrace, but they continued. And it's amazing how the scriptures say that they continued to, to have favor in the sight of God. Isn't it amazing? So in the, favor, in the sight of God, there was favor, but in the people. Sometimes we allow what people see and think of us to, to undermine what God is actually wanting to do and what he's actually saying to us right now. So I want to encourage everyone, keep your eyes on Jesus. So what does the angel say to to Zechariah. He says, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until that, until this happens. Because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. So we're going to just dive straight into Zechariah's song. And we're just going to, this is a build up to where the Holy Spirit fills Zechariah to the point where he prophesies. So we're just going to continue to read here. Zechariah's song has been called the Benedictus, which is, in Latin means blessed. Friends, as born again believers and sons of the Most High God, we are blessed. This song is packed. So the song that I'm gonna that we that we're building up to and into. This song is packed with Old Testament events that are foundational to the people of Israel. Luke tells us in Luke 1 verse 67 that Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads Zechariah into the song of praise and prophecy. We're going to get there. So what leads up to Zechariah being filled with the Holy Spirit and ultimately bringing the prophecy of Jesus Christ? So Elizabeth finally falls pregnant in Luke chapter 1 verse 24. And, then, and she gives birth in chapter, uh, verse 57. Elizabeth says, God has shown favor and taken away her disgrace among the people. Isn't that amazing? This is what God does. He takes away the disgrace that we carry and we find ourselves in favor with God. And he positions us to walk with him and walk into the life that he has for us. It, her neighbors and relatives have heard that the Lord has shown mercy on her and they can't but help to come along to share in the joy that she is now experiencing. So isn't it amazing? She goes from feeling this disgrace, carrying this heaviness to God doing something, uh, seeing the, 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 uh, the promise come to fruition and then there's a, there's a position of us being able to, to be joyful and, and, and come into this. Isn't it amazing? And you know what happens? People see this and they celebrate in the joy of what God is doing. A few days after the birth of their son, they come to circumcise and name the boy. And they said they're going to name him after the father, Zechariah. And Elizabeth says, no, stop. We can't do that. He has to be named John. 
they turn to Zechariah and they, and they signal to him, is this true? What is actually going on here? And he says, that they hand him a tablet. And to their astonishment, Zechariah writes on the tablet the name John. Immediately, immediately, it doesn't say how long he was actually mute for, but immediately, Zechariah's mouth opens. His tongue is set free. And he began to speak, praising God aloud. Friends, the people that were around them, witnessing, would have seen that the favor of God was on them, that something was taking place that had changed and positioning them. But not only that, this is at the very moment in verse 67 where Zechariah is filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesies. So I'm going to read the song of praise that he sings in this moment of this joyful, I can just picture it, it must be this joyful in his belly that it just came bloating out of him that he just couldn't control it and he just sings and just prophesies it says praise be to the Lord the God of Israel because he has come to his people and redeemed them isn't that amazing he has raised up a horn of salvation in the house of his servant David as he said through his holy prophets of long ago salvation from our enemies and from the hand who hates us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. To the oath he swore to our father Abraham and to rescue us from the hand of our enemy. And to enable us to serve him without fear. Isn't that amazing? In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. As born again believers that we can serve God all the days of our lives not fearing him obviously we want to have a deep awe and respect for who he is and what he's done but from a position of there's no fear we can confidently come into the presence of god every single day of our lives god says draw near to me and i will draw near to you in verse 76 it says and you my child now zachariah is speaking about john his son will be called a prophet of the most high for you will go on before the lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. Isn't it amazing the words he uses? To shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide your feet into the path of peace. Again, friends, and this is what we, I, I might repeat this once or twice, but, twice which we really need to understand that Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and only the Spirit can lead him to express these prophetic thoughts in the manner and the way he's brought it across in this song of praise so number three so my point number three is called what he prophesied about Jesus but in point number three because it's such a broad point I have three points in point number three if that makes sense so the first point is Jesus will come to redeem Zechariah starts off the song by thanking God for what was to come redemption of the people so he says in verse 68 he says praise be to the Lord the God of Israel because he has come to his people and he has redeemed them the presence of the Holy Spirit also indicates the prophecy spoken by Zechariah was good as done. Amen. Jesus was coming to redeem all humanity, not just the Jews. He was coming to redeem the world, all humanity, and the world would never be the same. Is everyone all right? I'm also right, thanks for asking. <laughs> it's a bit hot and sweaty up here, but we will we, we'll survive. The word redeemed. To obtain the release or restoration of as from captivity. Deliver from sin and its consequences. This is what ultimately Jesus came to do for Israel, 
but ultimately he came to do for the world. He came to bring redemption. The action. Redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. This is what God was coming to do. This is what Jesus was coming to do. God's plan for the redemption of his world. The people of Israel had been waiting for a Messiah. They had not heard from God in 400 years. That's like a very long time for someone to be silent and not hear from them. Yet through that, the scriptures also tell us that the, the, the Israelites at that time, in that 400 years, were under tremendous pressure, under severe sufferings, but still they did not hear from God. Isn't it? It's just it's mind-blowing to me. They were hated on all sides. There was enemies that were just after them all the time, trying to just bring them down, to kill them, to, 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 to move them basically out the way. The oppression and depression in Israel ran deep into the hearts of the people. You think about it, they were under this for 400 years. Think about what we've just been through over, uh, over the last two years. The oppression and the depression that has just been caused and the anxiety and the fear and the stress and what people have had to deal with and I can tell you so many people have been so very lost that they don't know where to turn or what to do and even some believers and Christians would have turned around and said that God has been silent through this time but we know that that's not true they were desperate they were desperate for a savior they were desperate for the Messiah to come and deliver them from the enemy. Friends, this is the revelation that the Holy Spirit put into Zechariah, that he saw what was to come, that produced this great joy of song of praise as to what God was going to do for the people of Israel, but ultimately what he was going to do for the world. Isn't that amazing? The great joy. And this is what we are living in today. That Jesus has come. He has come. He's accomplished. He's completed. And He is calling every single one of us to step in with Him. To be a part of His story. So that we can find out what page we are on of His story. And He will do amazing, amazing things if we just dare take a chance to choose to be with Him. Jesus would be a horn of salvation. To hear this language, a horn of salvation, would not be familiar to us today. I had to go Google what this meant. But it was familiar to the Jews at that time and it was commonly used in the ancient Hebrew literature. Okay. Example of this would be the horn of a bull which would be a, rep a representation of power. So this language that Zechariah is using through his song to the people, they would have identified with it that Jesus would have the power and he would have the strength to deliver his people. Friends, what are you going through today? What are our neighbors going through today? We need to turn to Jesus because he has the power and he has the strength to deliver us from anything and anything that we are going through. Signs and wonders follow those that believe. Do you believe that Jesus has the power and the strength to deliver you from what you need to be delivered through? He's a loving, gracious, amazing, but very powerful king that we serve. In verse 69, it says, He raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. In this song, the deliverance seems to be a national deliverance opposed to a spiritual deliverance. If you think about it, the way Israel would have seen it, with everything that they were going through. The song references enemies, references hate. To the average Jew, a national deliverance is likely what would have first come to their mind when they thought about the coming of the Messiah, the way Zechariah is now describing him as a horn of salvation, power and strength. When you think about 
the affliction, the suffering that they went through for 400 years, everyone trying to kill them. In their mind, the Messiah was coming back. He was going to lead the army and Israel was going to be restored. But looking back, we can now understand that Christ's coming was to redeem humanity's spiritual condition and save us from our spiritual enemy. So I want to read out of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 9. It says, Just as in His love, this is the amplified version, in His love, He chose us in Christ, selected us for Himself as His own before the foundation of the world, so that we would be holy, that is set apart for him and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined and lovely, lo- lovingly planned for us to be adopted to himself, his own children, through Jesus Christ. In accordance, I mean, this, this is important, in accordance with the kind intention and good pleasure of his will. To the praise of of his glorious grace and favor, which he so freely bestowed on us. Isn't that amazing? Bestowed on us in the beloved, his son, Jesus Christ. In him, we have redemption. That is our deliverance and salvation through the blood, which paid the penalty for our sin and resulted in the forgiveness and complete pardon of our sin in accordance with the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. In all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. See, friends, this was the great joy which Jesus was bringing, was going to bring into the world. Again, I'm going to say it. Jesus' coming was to redeem humanity's spiritual condition and save us from our spiritual enemies. The good news brings great joy. And you know what? From that position, when you know that the Messiah is with you, we're going to face mountains. We're going to face giants. We're going to face enemies. But there's a different posture that we take up when we know that we have the gladiator of gladiators on our side, that we know that his name is above every single name. His name is above cancer, it's a name of depression, it's a name, his name is above suicide, his name is above divorce, anything and everything that you will go through in your life. All you have to do is by faith and trust, invite Jesus into that space and the name that is above every name will conquer and bring you into freedom, bring you into liberation. But the question is, will you choose him? Will you trust him? Will you step out of the boat for him? And will you walk with him? Jesus would bring light to a dark and lost world. Have you ever walked through a dark room in a building and then trying to find your way through it? You know, you kick a chair, you kick the table. In my place, it's two o'clock in the morning. The load shedding goes off. We think that our little battery-operated light is working in the passage. You get up, it's pitch black. What do you kick in the passage? The battery-operated light that's not on. It falls apart on the wooden floors, makes a hell of a lot of noise, and everyone wakes up. We can all agree it is dark. I mean, it's hard. It's difficult to walk and see in the dark. It is. The nation of Israel has felt like they've been in in the dark after all their captivity, all their suffering, and all their struggles. And on top of that, God was silent for 400 years. But the great joy in the revelation brought to Zechariah through the praise, through his song, through the prophecy, Zechariah can't help but sing about God's forgiveness, His mercy, and His faithfulness. And you know what the most amazing thing about this is? That it was done before Jesus even came. There are things in our lives that we need to start praying into and trusting. Things that we haven't yet seen. 
We need to continue to, to, to sing our praises for His forgiveness, for His mercy, for His faithfulness. The things that we want to see bloom in our lives and change, we can pray into it now because He's faithful. He loves us and He cares about us. But continue to trust Him and hold on. I'm going to read from verse 78. It says, Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Friends, Jesus would come to give, Jesus would come to give us light. Amen. This would be something worth shouting for and singing about. This was the great joy that was coming into the world. It's always been about Jesus. It's always going to be about Jesus. It's always going to be about Jesus. And as sons and daughters of God, when we get on about being about Jesus, then we start to really live. And not only that, but how often do we find ourselves trying to live as believers and there's this, always this frustration, frustration. There's no breakthrough. It's because are we walking hand in hand with Jesus Christ? Are we allowing him? It's, Zechariah was led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led him to this point of being able to prophesy and bring this word. Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us into what Jesus has for us? The Holy Spirit hears from Jesus and downloads to what he's been told by the Father and Jesus and he reveals it to us. This is the Father God that we serve, that he reveals his innermost being to us through the Holy Spirit. And it'll be in a whisper, it'll be gentle, and it will be with friends and family around us that speak into our lives. But this is the Jesus that we serve. The Holy Spirit that leads us into life and life a plenty. I'm coming down, ending. John 8, 12 says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, and I feel like Jesus is speaking to people this morning in this scripture. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. John 1 verse 4, it says, In him was life. In the Amplified Version, we're going to hear that word power again. In, it says, In him was the power to bestow life. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Jesus has the power to bestow, just like the barren womb of Elizabeth, the barrenness in our lives and the things that are dead and that we are just struggling with. Jesus has the power to restore life and bring living waters to those areas. As the question is, it always comes back, are we willing to trust Him, not ourselves, that He can do it? In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is our great joy. He truly, truly is. He brings all the freedom and all the liberation to our lives when we walk with Him.